When you post something to your Facebook business page, how many people actually see it? The reality is not very many. Your organic reach on Facebook, the number of people who naturally see your post, is about 5.2%. So let's say you have 100 followers on Facebook, only five of them actually see any given post you put out. Not a whole lot, right? It's kind of a bum deal. Now we could gripe about that, we could complain about it, we could let it turn us off against Facebook, or we could embrace it for what it is and spend a little bit of money on advertising our post. The easiest way to do that is by boosting post. And frankly, in previous years, we would have advised against that. We'd have said it's too basic. It's not effective. You need to go ads manager. But today, if you're just getting started with Facebook ads, boosting posts is the way to go. It gives you plenty of targeting options, multiple objectives from which to choose, and it's a good starting point if you really want to broaden your reach on Facebook. When you're getting started with this, you may choose to use an existing post, something you put out over the last month that was a high performer that you'd like to see get further spread beyond your followers and into the community. The other option is to build something specifically for a Facebook boosted post. So for example, if you have a webinar coming up and you wanna get some additional eyeballs on it, maybe you build a post specifically for that. Either way, Facebook is going to want three things from you. That is, who do you wanna target? How much do you want to spend? And how long do you want this ad to run? For today, let's dive into the most interesting part of this, which is the targeting. There are so many options to choose from here, but there are a few that we think make the most sense. I'm gonna share with you four of those today and one that I'd probably recommend against. Number one is topic specific. Let's say for example, you've got a great article on your site about social security and you wanna drive some traffic there. Putting out a post on Facebook that you then boost to a specific audience can help drive that traffic. Now, Facebook knows what type of content you engage with. So if you wanna narrow your focus to those who previously engaged on the topic of social security, it allows you to do just that. Number two is income specific. Facebook only gives you so many parameters here, but if you wanna target the top 10% of income earners in your area, it allows you to do so. Obviously, there's a little bit of guesswork here on the part of Facebook. It's not an exact science, nor are any of these targeting criteria, but keep that in mind that there may be better ways to target those with money. This brings us to number three, interest-based targeting. Let's say Facebook doesn't really know who has money in your area, but you know your clientele really well. What do they have in common? What do they like to eat and drink? Where do they like to go and shop and travel? Facebook knows these things about us and you can use it in your targeting. So let's say for example, you analyze your top 25 or 50 clients and realize that they all like wine. They're into the arts and music. And maybe they shop at Neiman Marcus. Those are great targeting criteria. Or let's say they're into beer and boating and hunting and trucks. You can find anybody on Facebook with their targeting criteria. Interest-based targeting allows you to define your niche in Facebook relative terms and specifically target those people. And the fourth audience you may wanna target are people who follow your page and their friends. So as I mentioned previously, only 5.2% of your followers are actually seeing your post anyway. So this more or less guarantees that they're gonna see your post, plus a huge added benefit of their friends seeing it as well. So when one of their friends sees this post, it acknowledges right up top, they're seeing it because your client likes your page. That's really powerful online word of mouth. As you think about it, your next batch of clients is probably one degree removed from your existing clients. So why not put yourself in their news feeds showcasing your professionalism and your smarts early and often? And the fifth audience is having Facebook do a lot of the legwork for you. Now, this is the one I mentioned you probably shouldn't use, and I'll tell you why. Number one, you can set the goal as automatic, and Facebook will determine your objectives, whether that is to have someone call you, to visit your website, to watch your videos, and so forth. All pretty straightforward. It also will let you select a smart audience where Facebook says, hey, we know who you should put this in front of, and they pick an audience for you. It's just not that accurate. I'll give you an example. I set up a post earlier for Oxley and let Facebook choose who the smart audience would be. And you would think it'd be some subset of North American financial advisors, but instead it targeted those here locally who enjoy brunch and home remodeling and Williams Sonoma, not exactly our target client, right? So we have to do a little bit of the legwork here in defining an audience that fits our business needs. So as you think about taking action here, pick one of the strategies and roll with it. Put $100 behind it to start as a test and say, for example, I've got a great article that I'd like to make into a post. My objective is to drive people to my website and I'm gonna pick this band of people that I think will be effective. Now, that only has meaning when you compare it against other trials. 
So Facebook, as with any advertising, requires a little bit of trial and error and tracking to help you figure out long-term who's the best audience for you. So while you don't expect miracles in this in your first foray, you will expect to learn something so that your future advertising gets even better. I hope you pick something up today. I hope you get into Facebook advertising in a meaningful way. Let boosting post be the way you start.